Okay, so another uh, important uh, aspect of enzymes is the fact that not all enzymes are simple enzymes where they are just consist only of proteins. Uh, sometimes the protein uh, needs a cofactor to uh, be active or in order to um, catalyze chemical reactions. Okay, the cofactor can be a couple of different things. It can either be an enzyme, or excuse me, a metal ion, or it can be a small organic molecule. And if it's a small organic molecule, usually that's what's referred to as a coenzyme. Uh, small molecules that are needed for the enzyme to uh, function. An easiest way to 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 see why this uh, is important is actually just a little bit of a cartoon drawing. Okay, and so let's say we have a protein with an active site that looks like that. So here's my enzyme. All right, and my substrate looks something like this. All right, uh, so it doesn't have the correct fit uh, for lock and key model or even an induced fit, okay? Um, what happens is that you need the cofactor or coenzyme, excuse me, this is the substrate. You also need the presence of a cofactor to bind at the active site as well. When that happens, when you have the uh, cofactor or coenzyme present at the active site, suddenly there's the right fit. So there's my cofactor and now my substrate can fit perfectly in that active site now that the coenzyme is present. If that coenzyme wasn't present in that particular area of the active site, this chemical reaction wouldn't have occurred. And of course after this happens, uh, the um, cofactor or coenzyme and the enzyme are unchanged. But of course, the substrate has um, been converted into products. So the enzyme and the cofactor can continue on to catalyze uh, chemical reactions. So. Um, this is uh, required for these enzymes to work, the cofactor, whether it be a metal ion or a, the small molecule, which we call coenzymes, uh, in order for the substrate to be converted into products. Uh, so this is a required requirement for some enzymes. Additionally, there is um, some processes where a molecule can actually bind to the active site that isn't a cofactor or a substrate, and that actually causes the enzyme to stop working or inhibits its uh, function. And these are, of course, called inhibitors. And these are molecules that cause enzymes to lose their function or their catalytic catalytic activity.
Okay. All right, and uh, again, I'll try to draw this to, to explain this. Okay, so let's say we have an enzyme with an active site that looks like this. And let's say the substrate is very straightforward. It's also got very same shape, so it could bind to there. All right, and so if everything is perfect, the enzyme will form a complex with the substrate. And then, of course, after some amount of time, the substrate will be converted into products. So that, of course, is if everything's correct. And of course, as you remember, the uh, very important aspect, or one very important aspect of enzyme activity is the active site, which uh, responds to the specific shape of the substrate or will be an induced into a specific shape because of the uh, substrate's shape. So if anything disrupts this um, active site, its shape, um, of course, the enzyme will no longer function how it's supposed to. Okay, say so there's a molecule that can actually um, bind to the enzyme, but is not the perfect shape. That's called an inhibitor. And so now that the inhibitor is bound uh, to the active site of the enzyme, the substrate can no longer form a complex to be catalyzed. So there will be no products of this chemical reaction. And of course, um, that can be a very big problem for a lot of different biological activities. So the inhibitor um, molecules bind to the active site and basically change the shape so that the substrate no longer fits there into the active site. Additionally, you can have what's known as um, non-competitive inhibitors. This is a competitive inhibitor because it binds directly to the active site. Additionally, you could have a scenario where, let's draw our enzyme again, where um, if something is, you know, small as a metal ion, uh, can bind to one of, not bind to the protein, but not at the active site. And this induces a change in the overall shape of the enzyme with that metal cation there. And so again, the active site has changed shape and so no longer, the substrate can no longer form a complex. And so that can also inhibit this biochemical reaction. So that's a form of non-competitive inhibition because it does not uh, bind to the active site. Whereas the first example was competitive inhibition where the inhibitor actually does bind to the active site.